Greetings and welcome back to Into the Pit. If you like my channel, hit that like button and subscribe for many more reviews and specials coming up as well as interviews that I have lined up. Today I'd like to focus a little bit more on another iconic uh, graphic illustration artist. Last week we talked about the mighty Derek Riggs who pretty much accompanied Iron Maiden throughout their entire career. Thus, with the exception of the last few years where they've parted ways. But another really iconic artist that has really left his mark on uh, especially the thrash metal genre, but also crossing over a little bit into the hardcore and horror art. But um, none other than the famous Edward Repka, um, probably most known to you to, by the cover art of Megadeth, um, Death, Massacre, Toxic, those kind of bands. So today uh, I'd like to talk about that a little bit. So what we're looking at is really, um, number one, unmistakable. I think Edward Repka's art is always, albeit very colorful, but also very um, instantly recognizable in the style. Um, he is still active and he's doing a lot for next generation thrash bands and uh, hardcore sort of crossover thrash bands. And, um, but I must say, uh, a lot of the newer stuff is sort of, it's almost like just paying tribute, tribute or, or homage to, to earlier classic thrash and metal covers. And, um, I feel especially the older artwork, the classics, so to speak, um, really have a strong message as well. It's really, really, those are covers that I think to this day reflect the state of the world. And um, especially a cover like, say, Toxic's World Circus, Toxic's Think This, um, Death Spiritual Healing. Um, we have uh, covers like a Nuclear Assault Game Over. Really meaningful there, really strong um, artwork. Obviously, the Megadeth covers, always relevant somehow. And then you have covers tending more into, you know, horror. Um, like Death Scream Bloody Gore or Leprosy, um, Massacre's cover artwork, uh, yes, strongly influenced by uh, Lovecraft probably from beyond. And um, then another one that I actually didn't mention um, now in this last sentence, which also I think is one of the best Ed Repka covers is Evil Dead's Annihilation of Civilization. Now, Wow, <laughs> you have the pollution there, you have the guy fried by, you know, solar radiation because the atmosphere is gone and there's these nuclear waste vats lying around on the beach. Everybody's got skin disorders. It's, wow, it's kind of, yeah, well, we're probably heading there, aren't we? Then, um, yeah, he went on to do several negative covers. No more Mr. Nice Guy, um, Hangar 18, covers that you don't see that often. Really? You, I mean, the most known one is probably Rust in Peace and Peace Cells. Then you have um, Big Rattlehead um, with the uh, big atomic explosion behind him, those kind of things. I used to have that as a poster, as a matter of fact. Don't know what happened to it, sadly. Um, but just really um, eye-catching, stunning artwork. A Sanctuary's Refuge Denied. Beautiful cover that, um, Massacre from Beyond, but also in human condition, really also a great cover artwork right there. Then he did some more covers for um, a Bay Area thrash band called Defiance. There's one or two or three that he did. Um, he did one obscure one for Venom, which I found. Um, then he did something for Uncle Slam. That's what I mentioned, the more crossover kind of bands. And he even did Wrathchild America, Climbing the Walls. So I didn't... I know the cover, but I wasn't 100% sure that it was actually Edward Repka. A cover that I'm unsure of is the one album by Forced Entry. I'm not sure if it's a Repka. I didn't see it on the uh, wiki list of his. And yeah, and another classic one, Solstice, the Death Thrash band Solstice, uh, linked to Malevolent. I think the Malevolent drummer... Um, ended up playing in Solstice, or actually played in Solstice first and then for Malevolent. Um, so really, uh, yeah, uh, Atheist's Piece of Time, there's another one. So he really um, did some artwork which, you know, you, you can't think it away <laughs> these days. It's, it's just mind-boggling how 
influential and classic they were um, possessed seven churches is another one and um, hence why so many new generation thrash bands actually get an repka illustration for their album understandably so although i must say a lot of them sort of end up into this what they call pit, um, pizza thrash kind of you know just the covers with um, street violence and you know a bit of the nuclear thing going on um, I think Municipal Waste also had a few covers by him um, a few other ones that I, mentioned, um, I managed to pick up is oh there is an, another old one is actually Faith or Fear the thrash band um, with their release Instruments of Death and then you have bands like um, Suicidal Angels, who've actually used them quite a bit. You have Chemicost, you have SOB from Japan, Traitor, After All, Zero Down, Ultraviolence, Lost Society, um, Toxic Holocaust, Dust Bolt, Red Razor. Um, they, he actually did the, I think it was Sanctuary Demos um, for um, the band Sanctuary called Inception, which was a really good artwork, I must say. And then you have a band, uh, the big death tribute band, Gruesome, um, where he, I think, did every release thus far. So really some cool stuff. Um, newer bands, well, not that new anymore, but compared to what we have on feature here most of the time is um, Three Inches of Blood. He actually did that cover as well. Advance and Vanquish. And um, Ludicrist is another group. Then he had, uh, oh, there was an... Uh, it was it 90s, late 80s or 90s band called Napalm with their album Cruel Tranquility. He did one of the Whiplash albums called Unborn Again. So quite an extensive catalogue. And you must uh, remember that he doesn't only do album covers. He does horror art, probably uh, um, um, comics and um, shirt prints, illustrations, that kind of stuff. Uh, I think, I believe he's done mo a movie, uh, poster art. So really phenomenal what Mr. Repka has been up to. Great artwork there, uh, all in all. So I'll be showing you a few covers that I'll just um, put together uh, as a slideshow at the end, uh, especially those that are more obscure that you probably don't know of or haven't seen that much. Yes, then there's another group called Merciless Death, where, wow, I mean, that's really like pop horror art, you know, like that swamp scenario there. Then there's another band called Guillotine. Um, yeah, really amazing. I was quite amazed to see how much he's done. And um, But it's always great. Uh, I always enjoy seeing an, a Repka art again popping up uh, on newer bands. So uh, if I had a thrash band now, I'd probably have a Repka, Repka artwork done. If that's at all affordable, I don't know what his rates are. But yeah, really cool. Really great stuff. So, um, and yeah... Repka hasn't been loyal to just one band. Um, I guess you could say, well, like, you know, probably most known for Megalith and Death, uh, Nuclear Assault. Um, so he's, he, hasn't, he wasn't like Derek Riggs, who pretty much st stuck to Maiden most of the time. But that doesn't diminish his influence. And um, I think you, you can probably ask a lot of modern artists and they'll really mention Repka at one point or the other as an influence and just a great artist, great visual artist. And uh, I think what needs to be said is his uniqueness. Um, I think many there are people who try to copy him, but um, I can often spot the difference. If it's not a Repka, I can fairly quickly pick it up because his style is quite unique. And um, But yeah, there you go. Another iconic artist um, that has been an enrichment to all us thrash metal fans and death metal fans. I think... Um, He's really added a lot to the listening experience and also the shopping experience. And I will not start mentioning how many times Mr. Repka has influenced me to make that final step and take the vinyl, go to the counter, pay, go home <laughs> and be blown away. So a lot of times that has happened, really. Um, same goes for Mr. Riggs. Um, but then again, I guess the whole Eddie franchise really did the trick anyway, where you almost wanted to complete, you know, get the complete set sort of kind of uh, marketing mechanism that starts rolling in your head. So anyway, if you found any more um, Repka artwork that I might have missed 
art on, um, please do comment below. I'd love to find out. Maybe I, I'll know it. Maybe I, I won't, won't know it. And um, if you know of any cool sites that feature Repka art, um, and drop a note on which uh, other artist you would like me to feature. I've been thinking about Mr. Dan Seagrave and, you know, Necrolord, those kind of artists, but um, we'll see in time. So if you like my video, hit that like button and subscribe. And as I said, comment below. I always like to hear your feedback. See you next time.